overrated? Will? Is he overrated? Well, not on this list. 92nd player in the NFL, that's, that's fair to say ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Um, he's much better than 92nd. But I think he has been overrated for many of the past years. We, I think sports analysts, sports fans, everyone falls in love with potential, hype, the next big thing. We often like the next big thing to the detriment of the things that are right in front of us and are already there and are real. And that's been playing in Andrew Luck's favor for so long. He's in conversation sometimes with whether he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. Easily most people place him in the top ten. And I'm here to tell you that is overrating Andrew Luck. Because one day we all think he will be. One day he can be. But that day has not yet come. Um, I looked at his QBR over the last several years. And, and of course, last year he had a terrible year. He was ranked 25th in QBR. Right, and he's played to, seven games. Seven right. games. Right. So it's a, maybe we can say it's a an outlier. Game. But right. a comparable yeah. would be Colin Kaepernick last year. But if you go one more year back to 2014, he was ranked 13th in QBR. Again, comparable to Colin Kaepernick. Similar pattern here. If you go back a little further, he was in the eighth range. The two previous years, he was at a QBR ranking of eighth, which put him in Matt Ryan, Eli Manning range. That, to me, sounds about right. He's not a top five quarterback. He's maybe, maybe a top 10 quarterback. The list of names to push him down there are too obvious and real from Rodgers, Brady, Roethlisberger, Wilson, Newton, on and on. Then, then you get to a group where maybe Andrew Luck plays, Tony Romo, I mean, Drew Brees is still above him. We can't say he's above Drew Brees. Um, Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Eli. This is the range that Andrew Luck lives in. And I would say, by the way, he's not clearly above any of those guys I just named. So I think he has been overrated for quite some time because of his future and potential. Now, I guess, at 92nd, he's underrated. But that's, that's the aberration. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you like results? Are you a results-oriented guy? I would say yes. Okay. Do you know that Andrew... I feel like I'm walking down a path I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> do, you realize, do you realize that Andrew Luck, since 2012, has the highest QBR in clutch time of any quarterback in the league? And, again, 81.3 QBR in clutch time. Outside of clutch time, only 60.2, which would rank him in that middle of the pack. But when push comes to shove, when all the things are flying in the air and everyone's freaking out, he becomes the guy that has had the most success in that area. With that said... He's also the guy that took a two-win team to an 11-win team with very similar personnel and an offensive line. And I know this because I worked here with an offensive lineman for a year and a half in Mark Schlereth, <laughs> <Slayer, laughs> who talks about how bad that offensive line has been. Even the year before last, when he had his last full season, they were still only 16th in the league, even though he had the sixth-best sack rate in the NFL. So that means he's got to get rid of the ball quicker than most people, yet he's still not taking as many sacks as most people. He's also throwing the ball a lot. Um, because they haven't had a very comparable or competent running game, excuse me. So I, I think that there's a lot of factors here. I think when you're talking about quarterbacks, I think that there's a lot of things that play into this. It's not just the pure athleticism or the pure ability to play the position. Hell, Dan Marino threw a lot of interceptions. John Elway threw a lot of interceptions. A lot of guys have thrown interceptions. He certainly turns the ball over a lot. Drew Brees has turned the ball over a ton, okay? Andrew Luck in 2014 had 28 turnovers. So this is to play in your favor. He had the most in the league. Drew Brees was right there. Phillip Rivers right there, I believe 24 and 22. So he's playing in that league with those guys. I don't think he's Matt Ryan. I think he's way better than those guys. Again, when, when push comes to shove, when, it, when it's winning time, Andrew Luck with a average to below average supporting cast has been really good in this league. I don't think he's an elite quarterback, but I would never say to this point of his career, he's overrated. For me, I think there are five elite quarterbacks going into the season. Ben Roethlisberger is an elite quarterback in Pittsburgh. Cam Newton is an elite quarterback in Carolina. Drew Brees, elite in New Orleans. Aaron Rodgers, elite in Green Bay. Tom Brady, elite in New England. I think those five are my elite quarterbacks. That's no disrespect to Matt Ryan. That's no disrespect to Eli Manning. I think those five are better than them. I think Andrew Luck is in that tier of a category, and I think it says to the quarterback position in the NFL, it's easy to look at Andrew Luck and maybe to say, oh, people are overrating him, but what has he really done? And I think a lot of that comparison is, well, I don't think he's as great as Andrew Aaron Rodgers or as great as Tom Brady. Right. Well, there's a reason for that. There are certain guys that are in a different galaxy. And I think, to your point, Will, in a way, 
that, I think that's maybe where you're probably overrating him because we've seen what the other galaxy looks like. Tom Brady is probably going to play quarterback till he's 47. He's probably going to be an elite quarterback till he's 47 if he has his way. I look at a guy like Andrew Luck, and I think he has to do himself a lot a, a, a bigger favor that he has to protect the football better. And I think a lot of that's due to the fact that he puts too much on himself because he knows of the shortcomings of the offensive line, inconsistent running game. You don't know about your defense. That means the organization, Ryan Griggs and the general managers, do a better job. And what did they do this year? Three of their first picks, all offensive linemen. If you got that 18 karat gold in the vault, make sure no burgers can get in there and can take and have somebody to protect that vault. So I don't, I'm not going to overrate Andrew Luck, but I will say this. He has to be better. We, it, what's overrated uh, that people continue to give him a pass when he makes mistakes. That has to stop. It, that, he has to take some responsibility not, in that. It's, it's not just turnovers. I mean, Andrew Luck has terrible completion percentage. He's consistently in the bottom third of the league in completion percentage for starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And those are interesting clutch numbers you point out, but I, I believe, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, his playoff statistics are very average. Not very impressive playoff uh, appearances for Andrew Luck in his career so far. Many things go into it. I will agree with you on that. Offensive line, defense, there are, but touchdown to interceptions in the playoffs, Andrew Luck has not put it together. But be clear, my argument is not Andrew Luck is terrible. Andrew right. Luck is bad. Yeah. You're just saying he's overrated. Is this thing's overrated. overrated. Right. Why, and I would ask you both. You both, I think, agreed with me when you just kind of rattled off your lists. We named easily five, six, maybe seven quarterbacks he's behind. But that doesn't mean he's overrated but, to me. Well, last year, in this same list of, from NFL players that has him at 92 today, they had him at seventh. Isn't that right? Wasn't right, but it, how many quarterbacks were ahead of seventh, him? Probably like three or four, at least. Seventh in the NFL. Only three quarterbacks ahead of Andrew Luck is an overrated measurement well, for him. Look, that's the argument today. He has been overrated. Perhaps as the potential, that shine starts to dull on him, we can look at him more realistically, and perhaps he gets better and lives up to these expectations. When Doug Baldwin was in here, who happened to be a teammate of his, of Andrew Luck, we, I asked him about the way other players view the quarterbacks. And he agreed with me that, yeah, we look at him a little bit different because they get you know, protected in a lot of ways. And when you get players voting on this stuff, I mean, how subjective is right. this? Yeah. So, look, yeah. uh, Mike Sando, uh, who covers the NFL for us here, a little, I want to say about a year and a half ago or so, did a story. He interviewed 26 personnel guys in the NFL. He picked different teams, 26 personnel guys. They had Andrew Luck in their top five, in their upper tier of quarterbacks. These are guys who do this for a living who well, feel that he... Partially, they're trying to imagine in their minds how to build a team. And his youth and potential has been part of that oh, equation. Okay, but Jay, okay, let's take some players then. Mm -hmm. Frank Gore basically called him a football god not that long ago, okay? J.J. Okay. <laughs> Watt says... Slight overrated there. J.J. Watt, uh, maybe a bit of an exaggeration. J.J. <laughs> Watt, though, did say that pre-snap, he's one of the best quarterbacks he's right. ever seen, okay? So I, I think that there's a lot to this. And I think that he's played with a subpar cast in a lot of ways. Remember, I just want to yeah. say, they, they, I'm, they're helping me. They tell me in my ear, not helping me out, but I had asked for the statistics. It's nine touchdowns to 12 interceptions in the playoffs mm. for Andrew Luck. It just hasn't. It hasn't materialized so yet. Yeah, Peyton stunk in the playoffs in right. a lot of cases, right. too. And remember this. It's subjective with the list, but they're basing the list on what the players did the year, not overall. That's no, where this it. list is coming from. Right. So that's he why he was right, seven. Though. Right, he is right. right, but that's why he was seven last year and then 92, 92 this year. Both are wrong. Games. He's somewhere in the middle. And right. I would suggest the, the previous that's years fair. he was somewhere in the 20s and 30s. That's, fair. that's about right. That's fair. I think we could all agree that Tom Brady is not overrated, right? Look, 92 for the NFL Network is the biggest look at me thing ever. It's, hey, watch our show. Go go to our list. Go to dot .com. Look at us because, you know what? No one's probably watching this show, so let's go watch it because we put Andrew Luck at 92. And well, it kind of worked because we're talking about right. it. Right. Yeah. It worked. So you won, <laughs> NFL Network. Congrats. That, that, that one. You won. Better. Congrats. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, hey, let's talk about Tom Brady next. The Patriots, they won 12 games last season with Tom. But now that it looks like New England will be without their Hall of fan QB for four games. How many games will the Pats win this upcoming season? It's AFC over under next. The Eagles, we saw what happened last season. Chip Kelly, he is now out and in came a new regime with head coach Doug Peterson. In came quarterback Carson Wentz via the second overall pick. But then we have Sam Bradford for now. Still hanging around, so over under seven wins. George? Under. I didn't even have to think about this yeah. one because no matter what happens, I mean, look, Sam Bradford, I mean, how many of his teammates have even reached out to him at this point? I think the report was one, maybe two. Jordan Matthews point. said that, yeah. that a couple of guys have reached out yeah, to him. Yeah, a couple of guys. But the point is, guys look, and we'll get into that situation later, but guys look at him and be like, really, dude? Are you serious? Like, this is what's happening? So you've got that. Then if he doesn't play, do they, they go with the young guy? I mean, that's going to be a recipe for disaster. Okay, so... 
I do think Wentz could be a good quarterback down the road. I don't think you throw him into the fire coming out of North Dakota State. I think that could be a recipe for, for disaster, as I mentioned. But uh, first-year quarter uh, coach Doug Peterson, like, there's just so many things working against them. I think the roster is still in flux. They're still trying to figure out what they want to be after the years of Chip Kelly and trying to remove themselves from some of the guys that were on that roster. Too much flux going on. I just think it's an easy under. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who could have reached out to Sam Bradford. Half of them are gone. This, they're, 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 purging, they're purging the Chip Kelly players from the roster. You can't have that kind of turnover on an NFL roster. You can't expect to have any kind of successful continuity with a roster turnover like that. I'll give you one prediction I feel, by the way, under. If, I had, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm very, right, 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 right. under. Um, one prediction I feel very confident in is the Eagles will play three different quarterbacks this year. You will see Possible. start. Chase Daniels will start, Sam Bradford will start, and Carson Wentz will all start this year. Most of the time when you are starting three different quarterbacks in a year, you're not putting together a successful season yeah. under seven wins. Yeah. yeah, I'm with him under as well. I, I still don't think Carson Wentz will get any time in. I think if I'm Doug Peterson, I'm smart to leave him out of that fray, get used to Philadelphia, get used to the fan base, have a year of that, learning the position and not just throwing him out there. And then bring him along slowly because that does work. It worked with Steve McNair. It worked with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Granted, he had Brett Favre in front of him. Sometimes it's best to wait, especially when he's going from North Dakota State and their power in FCS. They have one of the, the, the best program yeah. in FCS. A long way from Fargo, North Dakota to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I want to take my time with that guy. But to you, your points about everything being in flux, a new coaching staff in that city where impatience has been in great supply since 1960, the last time they won an NFL championship. Doug Peterson may have been the right hire. We'll see. But it's not going to be a good year. I got Eagles under as well. Yeah, as an Eagles fan, I hate to admit it, but I think I'm going to agree with you guys. I think we'll be lucky if we get to five wins. But you know, I do like the Peterson hire, though. I do think long term that will help them. But yeah, it's not going to be a good year. Oh, you get a high draft pick next year. Yeah. Oh, again, it's true though. Yeah, you're right though. Too soon. Too soon. It'll be Cleveland. That's right. It'll be in Cleveland. Oh no. Anyway, let's talk about the Red.